right, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wabra Kapodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like. To the rest of the church who believe as well, including the women, to the dead in Yahweh Shai as well, and the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. All right? Uh, let's hit on um, Romans 11 and 5. And we'll take it through 5 through 7. We've been gifted with something very amazing, man. And it's hidden in plain sight because when you open up these scriptures, it's full of all sort of, you know, dark secrets and mysteries. A lot of people can say, you know, I have a Bible, but they don't have the deep mysteries of the Bible. That's right. Okay? Let's go ahead. This is the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 5. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So at this present time, just like going back to the time of Elijah, or Elijah, there was a remnant, all right? There was a remnant who were set up not to worship Baal, which Baal is just another way of saying Lord. Our Lord is Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai. Those are our Lord, all right? So in this day and age, you have certain men who are going to be set aside and who are going to praise the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. That's right. And you're going to also have those set aside who are going to serve, you know, different entities outside of the true power who are going to be destroyed because they were not set up to receive grace. So the election of grace, that scripture is just saying the elect are going to receive grace. Uh, read that again. Even so, then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to to the election of grace. So how are you to receive grace from the Heavenly Father? You have to be set up from the beginning and be the elect. Now the elect are going to receive grace because they're going to receive this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The rest of the world, even if told to them, they're not going to receive it. Go ahead. And if by grace, then it is slaki. Then is it not more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more. Grace, but if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. So we're not the elect based off of our work alone. We're the elect if the Most High created us from the very beginning to be the elect. That's right. But the elect are going to carry themselves at a different standard from the rest of this world once they wake up to the truth, okay? Now, once you come to the truth, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you're gonna be perfect. A lot of people like to believe that when you believe the Bible, you're supposed to just be 100% perfect. You can't make no mistakes. That's a lie, man. The Lord has always dealt with the rough men, so to speak. A lot of rough and rugged men who needed help, man. They needed a savior. And women who were messed up, they needed a savior of our nation. You had men and women back then, just as now, who were set up from the very foundation of this earth to receive the truth and then to receive grace, to be delivered, which is a future prophecy that has not happened yet, man. None of us have been saved or delivered, but it's a prophecy that's gonna be made manifest, so in the spirit, it's already happened. Whoever the elect are, you've already been delivered. You've already been given mercy and grace. That's already been bestowed unto you. But the rest of the nation, because they've been blocked from this truth, they're going to be blocked from getting on the chariots. They're going to be left here. That's right. Go ahead. What then, Israel, hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So the elect will obtain the truth. Let's hit 2nd Esther 6 and 25, and we'll take it down to about 28. So the truth is here. But... That doesn't mean all Israel is going to be capable of obtaining it. It doesn't mean all Israel, the Negro, Latino, and Native American, according to their father's line, it doesn't mean they're going to necessarily study it, get into it, care about it. Their heart's not going to be into it if they're not meant to receive it. So the truth is here in this day and age. 
So the truth, these secrets are hidden in plain sight. We're the right hand Illuminati, all right? And really, when you look at the term Lucifer, people think that's an evil term. Yahweh Shah is Lucifer. His men are Lucifer. Lucifer just means you are a holder of the light. Esau, he holds that light on the left-hand side. Okay, through this knowledge, you become uh, illuminated. We are the real Illuminati, man. Go ahead. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 25. Whosoever remaineth all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation. And that's speaking of those who are going to receive that grace, the elect. And the end of your world. The end of whose world? Esau's world. All right. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. So that just shows you right there, not all men are going to die on the side that are in this truth. Wait, some of us are, but some are. Read that uh, scripture again. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. So there are men in this generation, they've been birthed from their mother. They came out of their mother's womb. In this present day, they're still alive. And they're going to be alive even to the point of seeing them chariots come and delivering them out. So not all men in this truth are going to die. Can we precept that right quick? We'll hold that. And let's touch on uh, Mark 9 and 1. And after that, we'll jump right back to it. This is the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death. And that was speaking to the twelve, all right? Now, that applies to all the men of the Lord. There are some of us who are here right now who are never going to die again from this point on. In these bodies, some of us are going to be delivered in them chariots and changed. Some of us are going to be martyred. We understand that. That's right. But you can't say everybody has to die. That doesn't apply when it comes to the scriptures, man. That's of the world to say everybody has to die. In this generation, not everybody has to die. And some of us who have to, hey, man, you're going to be the first one on the chariot, right? And that's according to 2 Thessalonians. So let's, let's touch that again, then we'll jump back. And he said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death. And that shows you reincarnation because everybody at that time died already. They died thousands of years ago. So what does that mean they won't taste death? That means in this day and age when they come back in the reincarnation that last go round for the end of Esau's world, certain men are not going to die again. Period, man. And that shows you reincarnation. That's a reincarnation scripture right there. Wake them up. Because no man on earth is over 2,000 years old who's alive and breathing right now. Okay? Maybe the spirit within us, his age is old, but the flesh that you're in currently is not thousands of years old. All right? Okay. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 25. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. And that's speaking of the plagues that are coming. <laughs> not everybody's going to get caught up in that wrath, man. Not the elect. They'll go through it, but it's not going to be in the same manner as the people of this world. That's right. Okay, go ahead. And the men that are received shall see, who have not tasted death from their birth, and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. Man, go ahead. For evil shall be put, our and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome. And the truth which has been so long without fruit shall be declared. So how do we know that we're in the last days right now? Because the truth is here now. The truth is being declared through the men of the Lord. So now we know we're at the end of this world. But we just read in Romans 11 and 7 how the elect are going to be blind to the truth. So just because certain of our people can't obtain it, it's not going to stop this truth from spreading to those who are supposed to receive it. That's right. 
that's the beautiful time we're in right now is the end. The beautiful thing is knowing that whatever you're going through in life, whether your burdens are little, bigger than others, whatever the case, whatever you're going through, this ain't it. Whatever your, your greatest, you know, imagination is, man, the kingdom of heaven is lapping that, man, multiple times. We have to understand as Israelites, through this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, this isn't like going to school and then at the end of it all, you're trying to go to college and you graduate college and you may not come home to a job. You may have done all that for no reason. This knowledge that we're gaining is leading us to immortality. Everlasting life, man. That's right. Everlasting dominion. Everything starts with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in life in general. When you're dealing with women, that takes knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. When you're dealing with the job, same thing. Okay, and somebody who's technical and works on vehicles, that takes knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on how to operate the vehicle. When you're dealing with the hood, what you shouldn't disconnect, what you should disconnect, how you should disconnect it, all of these things take knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, but the ultimate supreme knowledge is within these scriptures, and that's what's gonna get you delivered. Everything else, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong with being knowledgeable of many things. But the men who are going to make it out of the destruction to come is through these words right here, man. All right? Read that again. And then we'll grab Deuteronomy 29. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which hath been so long without fruit shall be declared. And that shows you for ages Esau's been spreading these lies, man. We've been going off the lies of this world. And then it's showing you now the truth is being declared. We're declaring the truth, the men of the Lord. And that shows you that the prophets have to be here right now because you're hearing things that you weren't hearing 60, 70 years ago. Hell, uh, going back to when our teachers started coming out here and men who taught them going back to the, to the 70 era, late 60, 70 era, okay? Even around that time, this truth wasn't around the whole earth like that. The truth is around the whole earth. Everybody's heard it, man. Wake them up. Okay, so now we're at a point where no one has a cloak for their sins anymore who's heard this knowledge. So when destruction comes, the elect, they're going to be set. They're going to be good. There's going to be times you might get shooken up, but the Most High gave you enough faith and birth to where now you're going to rely on everything that you've been taught in the time of war, and that time of war being Jacob's trouble. Right? 29 and 29. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed unto us to our children forever, that we may do all the words of his law. So he gave all those secrets unto us, man. He gave all those secrets unto the men of the Lord. The Israelites showing you we have to be the Lord's chosen people because we're doing what the prophets in the ancient world did. That's right. You don't see uh, Moabites out here doing this, man. The so-called Jews in Israel, you don't see them prophesying. You don't see the prophets, you know, telling you who the Israelites are, what's gonna come. All you hear about is Jew, Jew, Jew. Where's the rest of the 11 tribes at? Because them not being the Israelites, but yet having the dominion over the whole earth shows you how special it is to be a child of the Most High. That's right. We've been given those mysteries, man. And the elites, they'll watch our videos. You might see us as common men, you average everyday people, but the elites, they're terrified of us, man. Each and every one of us in this truth, they understand who we are, man, and they want to get rid of us. They understand what the Most High is doing and what's to come, so they're trying to pour this new world order. And the fact that that's been exposed, the Most High is revealing many secrets and mysteries to the world that some people still can't grasp it and still look at it as conspiracy theory and not even knowing what that means. Read that again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his law. Let's hit uh, Amos 3 and 7. Right, so not everybody is going to be given those mysteries 
even if somebody literally told you out of their mouth the mysteries of the Most High. The Most High can block everything someone told you in one ear and out the other. That's right. Really, that's the Most High leaking that knowledge out of you because he don't want to deliver you. He's bound by his word. If you're bound to this truth, and you are abiding by his word to the best of your ability, he has to be bound by his word and pull you out of what's to come. He doesn't want that for everybody because you've done something somewhere. And not only that, even further back, you were created not to receive that deliverance. Man. Wake them up. Okay. Go ahead. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Only God can judge me. A lot of people say that, man. You try to uh, uh, tell them about themselves. Look, only God can judge me. The Lord ain't going to do nothing. Because when the Lord does something, that's when people start dying. That's right. He speaks to his men. We give the warning. And if you don't accept it and you neglect it, so be it. You've been told. But the blood's off our hands. It's on you now. Okay? So since he gives his secrets unto his servants, what you think? Well, maybe we should listen to these men who are speaking not only out of their own mouth, using their word, but they're coming out of the Bible when they do it. As a Bible believer, maybe I should listen to what they have to say. And then I'll discern whether or not they're speaking BS or not. You people, you don't even take the opportunity to listen to anything. And this can go anywhere throughout the earth, even outside of Babylon, when you see these other camps. You people are the same everywhere because it shows you the same spirits control this whole entire globe. Man. That's right. Okay? Read that again. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Let's get uh, Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 10. Yeah, 29 and 10. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 29. Now let's, let's start at 9. Verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. You're drunken off the philosophies of this world. And some people will read that. See, it says right there, you can't get drunk. You can't drink. That's not what that's talking about. That's right. right? That's another philosophy that people get drunk on. You can't drink. But then you hear about not only Noah getting drunk, who was a righteous man of the Lord. You hear about your hours shot turning water to wine but you can't drink that don't, that don't even make no sense man. cry ye out and cry they are drunk but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink for the Lord hath poured out upon the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes Dang. so the Lord actually has a spirit in the earth so a lot of these people although they actually lay eyes on those men, they've actually witnessed the prophets. But because the Most High has put a blindfold on the majority of this world, the truth is right in front of them, but it's hidden in plain sight. Just like how the Illuminati work on the left-hand side. They have secret symbolisms and everything. It's right in front of your face, but if you're ignorant to their knowledge, it's going to go right past you. That's right. The Most High deals the same way. And they try to act like the Most High. So he'll put the truth right in front of you, man. But then he'll blind you to the point you don't even see it. But yet you're searching for it. Because what the brother read in Romans 11 and 7 is how the elect, they seek for it, but they're going to be blinded from it. What are they seeking for? The truth. Israel all about seeking out what life about, man. Jake roll up a fat blunt. Talk about what life about. They don't get nowhere, man. That's right. Okay? Because, see, you got to be given the Holy Spirit. You got to be set up from birth. Before you were born, you got to be set up from the foundation of this earth to be the elect of the nation of Israel. Israel is the elect nation of all nations. Within that elect nation, you have elect people. Okay? Go ahead. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. And, and the guess what? He just read, now the truth is flourishing again. There was a time period the prophets weren't out here. 
That's you right. had to go to church on Sunday and hear what they had to say and totally butcher everything. And then at the end of the day, they brought out two scriptures, a bunch of motivational speeches. And then after you give up your money, and then somebody asks you, hey, what you doing at church? The only thing you got to say is, oh, well, pastor, he was just going into how everything's going to be all right. And at the end of it, you know, we gave him some money. And that was pretty much it. Wake him up. Well, what, what scriptures did you guys go into? Uh, well, he brought out one scripture, but he didn't really talk about it much. That's all you can really say if you're being honest, man. That's right. You don't get no full course meal when you go into church. And as a believer, when I was in the world, when I first heard this truth, and I saw men coming out the Bible, that was enough to grab my attention because I claimed to believe the Bible, right? So if I claimed to believe the Bible, wouldn't it make sense to listen to people who are bringing out the Bible. Wake them up. That was one of the, the things in my mind that was just common sense that brought me to the truth, okay? But you have certain men, they've been blinded after hearing the actual truth. It's not good enough. It, oh, that's too simple. You mean to tell me where the Hebrew Israelites? That's not enough, man. You mean to tell me that's the answer to life is the fact we sinned? The reason why our people were slaves is because we sinned against the Most High Nah, man, a white man got you brainwashed, man. So you need to put that book down. You know what I'm saying? You gotta move forward, man. You gotta let that go. See, we, we moving on. This is the new age, brother. You can't be holding on to what the white man did to us. You can't be holding on to that book. See, they've been blinded, man. They've been blinded, but yet the truth's been presented to them. That's right. Okay, and that's why, now let's say Jeremiah 3 and 15. And that's why the most high is gonna destroy a lot of niggas because that's just what he wants to do, okay? It ain't got nothing to do with us being a bunch of assholes and we just want to see a whole bunch of people die. Man, that's the Lord's will, man. That was set up before our creation. That's right. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter three, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Oh, what, what the Lord made you a prophet? Man, you ain't even over 150 pounds. The Lord made you a prophet. You can't even grow a beard on your face. The Lord made you a prophet. Man, every time I see you, you ain't got no money in your pocket. Man, the Lord chose who he wants to be prophets. He didn't give a, a damn about your opinion back then. Wake him up. And he don't care about your opinion now on who you think should be considered a man of God. Oh, well, he got a nice car, so yeah, I, I can see him as a man of God. Yo, he got a decent job. Yeah, he probably a man of God. He prospered. The most I don't give a damn about what you people want. That's he right. He chooses who he wants to be the prophet to teach his people, man. That's all on him. We don't make that choice. Man. That's right. That's why the scriptures also say he chooses you. You don't choose him. For you to say you chose God, that's arrogant. He chooses you. All right, go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I'm giving you that truth. And then if you reject it, that's on you because he decided he was going to make prophets. And to be a prophet, that's over a king. That's a top position. This is serious, man. The Most High sees what we're doing as foolish, but yet this is a top position, man, in the whole earth. Because back in the ancient world, even the kings had to go to the prophets to find out answers, man. All right? But King David and other men like King David were kings and prophets. And that's why the scriptures also tell you how the Lord has uh, really he made us to be kings and priests. And that's what we're going to be in the kingdom, man. The priesthood started with the Levites. But now we're in the time where all the tribes, all the men are considered priests, man. That's right. Okay, and when we tell you this truth, based off, you know, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai raising us up to give you this knowledge, and you don't accept it, now you're in trouble. Go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Let's hit uh, John 16 and 13. So yeah, man, you can't listen to what people feel, man. You gotta have the spirit of discernment. A lot of people are quick to go off what they hear when somebody makes a judgment on somebody. Oh, he can't be a man of God. I remember there was one video, he made an Edomite get on his knees, and, and worship him, and da, 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 da. and then all of a sudden somebody will, oh, he can't be a man of God. 
people are quick to go off what others say. They don't have their own rational thought anymore. That's right. And when they do have their own rational thought, it gets easily shaken up by somebody's damn opinion. Oh, he can't be a man of God. See, I ain't gonna lie. For a while, he had me there. But when he was talking about them going to slavery, I ain't, uh -uh, I ain't with that, man. All right, cool. The Most High set up who he set up to tell you the message. Go ahead. This is the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13. How big, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, or uh, slack it, he shall hear that he that shall he speak, and he will shew you the things to come. The spirit of truth. That's an actual spirit, man. That's right. That is, and if you think about that, brothers, even, even sisters who watch, you know, when you tell somebody this truth, and it's just like, they oppose it in whatever way they do it, it's spiritual. This is a spirit, man. This spirit can't dwell in just anybody. And that's deep, and that shows you how special it is for you to accept this truth. That's right. To receive it and accept it. To us, it might seem like it's common sense. That, it just, it, it sounds right, it feels right, you know it's right through faith, but it goes deeper than that. The Most High had to allow you to accept this spirit, man, to receive this spirit, the spirit of truth, which also shows you there's a spirit of lies, and that's the spirit that's conquered this world, man. Let's bring up that scripture one more time, man. That, that's heaven. That's why Jake can't receive it, because the, the truth being spiritual, if your spirit ain't right, the, the truth ain't gonna work with you, man. That's right, go ahead. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, guide you. So we're guided through the spirit of truth. Go ahead. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that she that shall he speak, and he will shew you the things to come. And that's the secrets of the scriptures, man. We understand what's to come because we've been guided through the spirit of truth. And that's how serious our position is in this truth. That's right. We're not just you know, out here to just waste our time, man. A lot of you think, you know, one day this may vanish. You know, you're not gonna see us doing this no more. You know, all the prophets throughout the earth, you know, all of a sudden it's gonna be a thing in the past. America is just gonna keep pushing on and, you know, things are gonna bounce back and get better than ever. You know, this is what a lot of people feel in their spirit. But that's not the case. That's right. And that's just, you know, the message we present being one of them secrets, and now we get hated for it. Matter of fact, let's touch on Galatians 4 and 16. And then we get hated for it. But look, man, I'm not, and this brother and all these other brothers who you see doing this in sincerity, we're not trying to, you know, die for any of you niggas, man. That's right. How was Shai did enough for us? That's right. Okay? And the only way I'm going to lay down my life for a brother is in righteousness, not in foolishness. I, I ain't laying my life down for no nigga who ain't about you. How about show me how was Shai? That's right. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? The answer is yes, man. We've become many people's enemies because we've told them the truth. And ever since you've told them the truth, it ain't been the same since. You know why? Because people are becoming an enemy, not only to you, but they're really showing that they're an enemy to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai because you're just bringing his message. Now, people might like you personally for who you are. That's right. But when the Spirit's on you and you're speaking that word, all of a sudden, I don't want nothing to do with you, man. Oh, you mean to tell me he coming over here? No, I gotta go, man. I ain't trying to hear him bring out that Bible stuff. Even if you don't, the fact that they know you in the truth, I'm, I gotta go, man. Wait till now, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we spoke the truth. And the truth is being too hot for these niggas to handle. It's too sharp. And it's a spiritual thing. Okay? The spirit be chasing people away. Because it shows you the most high is doing all the heavy labor just through the word. All we gotta do is present the word. The word's doing everything else for us, man. And you gotta understand it's not just words we present, man. This is power. Things are happening based off of these words going out, man. Because the heavens 
the angels are showing Yahweh what we're doing. Yahweh Shah is seeing what we're doing and presenting this to the Heavenly Father, man. So there's a vibration behind this. All right? Go ahead. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So now let's hit Jeremiah 33 and uh, verse 3. And it's funny when you tell somebody about themselves, all of a sudden they don't like you, man. You know? If you tell somebody, hey, man, you look like you need to brush your teeth, man. You look like you got some butter on there. They gonna look at you like, oh, this nigga think he's funny. This nigga talking, da -da -da -da, and all of a sudden you wanted to give him the KO, man. You want to knock him out, man. He was just telling you you need to brush your teeth, man. That's and right. it's the truth. The only time people want to hear something is when the truth is beneficial to their ear. If you tell somebody, hey, man, hey, those shoes is fresh, bro. And you might really feel that way. And they feeling good. But when you tell them, hey, man, them ain't even the, the real Jordan, bro. They gonna look at you like, what you mean? And then you break it down in detail. This is why, let me show you. <laughs> you know, they gonna be looking at you like, man, this is me. All because you told them the truth. The truth is very powerful. So how much more this word, man? Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse three. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and shew the great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And this is to the elect, man. The Most High will give you the understanding. If there's things you come across in the Bible and you don't understand it, pray on it. And if it still comes to where you just don't get it, just just get, go, skip past it, man. Don't spend time, you know, dwelling on, I, I still don't get this. What does this mean? When the time is right, if the Most High wants you to get it, he'll, he'll give you the understanding through a brother, man. You might just come across a video out of nowhere. Dang, I was just thinking that yesterday. Wake him up. And all of a sudden, there's a video right there. So when you don't have understanding, just pray on it, man. You know, because as a body, when you look at the body of Yahweh Shai, collectively, we have the whole truth. When you divide us, there are certain things that brothers just may not know but another brother or another brother or another brother may have the answer to it. Because as one body, man, we're one sharp, threshing instrument, man. We have the answers to everything. There's brothers that's good when it comes to the herbs and health. There's brothers that's good with, you know, when it comes to prophecy. Brothers that's good with bringing out scriptures. That's right. Brothers that's good with reading. You know, brothers who can hold a sign. And that, that's taking, like, patience and, and energy, man. Because when you hold a sign for a while, your arms start feeling weak. That's but right. You got brothers, man. They'll just be standing there the whole video, man, holding the sun. You'd be like, dang, man. You know, you really got to consider that's actually some work. You know what I'm saying? So we have different lots. But, you know, as a body collectively, we have the truth already. So what you don't know, especially us younger brothers, just pray on it, man. And don't beat yourself up trying to get all the deepest mysteries of the Bible. Start with the vegetables, man. Start with the basic things. And then work your way up to the steak and the, and the potatoes, man. All right? Read that again. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and shew the great and the mighty things which thou knowest not. And there's a lot of things we didn't know before that we know now. And as we grow, there's things that we don't know now we're going to know then. And in the kingdom, we're going to know everything we need to know. That's right. Okay, so whatever we lack right now, don't beat yourself up on it. You know, all you got to do... Just do what you can. Study, do what you can. Be guided by the right people. And then once you're guided by the right people long enough, you can kind of, I don't want to say stray away because that's, that's not the right word, but you can kind of, you know, watch other videos at different camps and understand when they're going on. When you're understanding that, then you can kind of come to the conclusion of knowing now there's nothing that can deceive me anymore because now I have a firm foundation. When you first come into the truth, you don't want to be camp hop, man, because then you'll be all confused. You have one person saying this, one person saying that, then you're praying to the most high for answers, but then you're bugged out because you're just listening to all these diverse doctrines, man. That's right. Okay? When you, when you really get full grown, which I'm not even there yet, when you get full grown, you're still learning. So how much more, you know, us being young men, we still grow. So all the truth that we have, we build on it, and then we pray for what we don't have, man. Period. Okay, it's that simple. And a lot of brothers, man, they think it's about having it all. You don't have it all, man. Only Yahweh Shai had that gift. And 
And we ain't Yahweh Shot. We're miniature Yahweh Shots. We're Yahweh Shot Juniors, man. We ain't Yahweh Shot. That's right. Uh, Matthew 7 and 8. I'm going to grab some of those. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and him to that knocketh, it shall be opened. So you got to ask, man. These mysteries that are in these scriptures, if you're an Israelite, if you're sincere, and you pray to the Lord, I don't see why he won't open your mind up seeing he's only going to give that type of mind frame to one of his elect. That's right. A bugged out individual is not going to really care or consider about honestly wanting to know the mysteries of the scriptures. But starting lowly, man, not coming into the truth and all of a sudden you want to learn about how to break down the book of Daniel 7, 2nd Ezra uh, 11, okay? You know, there's some deep mysteries in the scriptures that young brothers come in and they want to break it down early, they fall out early, man. Because they vomit all that out because they really force feeding themselves, man. You can't force feed yourself with this truth. But you gotta ask when there's certain things that you don't understand. And if it's too heavy, just just keep just keep processing elsewhere, man. That's right. There's so much, you know, to obtain in the word to get caught up over one thing, it's gonna bug you out, man. Go ahead. For everyone that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh find it, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? So seeing that the heavenly father, he's righteous. So just like we have an earthly father, if you ask your father for some food, and let's say instead of him giving you some food, he give you something totally opposite, something you can't even eat. You're going to be like, well, what am I going to do with this? That's right. That's just being wicked, man. So when we ask the Heavenly Father for something, why is he going to try to play us, man? Oh, you asking me for this. I'm going to trick you and give you something else that you didn't even ask me for that don't even benefit you. Your own parents, when you ask them for stuff as a younger child, they'll go out of their way and get it for you. So how much more the Heavenly Father when you ask for these mysteries, man? Okay, and a lot of brothers, man, you think it's about... I, I, please, Heavenly Father, bless me with a few wives. Please, Lord, bless me with, with, with a good job so I can have a, a big house. That's not what it's about, man. Go ahead. For if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Go ahead. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Okay, now, when you ask him, it sounds simple. Well, I ask the Lord stuff all the time, but it never happens, right? So this is uh, Matthew's chapter 21, verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So when you ask the Most High through his Son for these mysteries, but deep down inside you don't really believe he's going to do it for you, he ain't going to do it for you, okay? If you feel like, you know, there's nothing wrong with praying for the most high to give you a better job or a decent job or somewhere a little more comfortable or whatever. But at the same time, man, you know, a lot of people, they expect the most high to just jump on it right away. Man, I prayed that three days ago, man. He ain't did nothing yet. And then all of a sudden that belief just slowly leaks out of them. And all of a sudden, they don't even believe it can happen anymore altogether. And then it just never happens, man. That's right. Okay? You got to believe when you ask. Okay? These mysteries that we have, which was given to us freely, you still got to put the effort in and study. And then what you don't know, you ask with belief, man. Okay? Let's hit on uh, Romans 11 and 4. This is the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Bob. Now I want to touch back on Romans 11 because we skipped that verse, all right? Now, 
you had certain Israelites, like I said, going back to the time of Elijah, who didn't serve the image of Baal. So here in this time, you have Israelites who are sanctioned to, to pretty much serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now I want you to uh, skip past the rest of them and jump straight to 8. Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see. And that's a precept of what we just read earlier in Isaiah 29 that I wanted to get back to because you were, we're kind of reversing a little bit, but I wanted to touch on these two points. Go ahead. Eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear unto this day. So even to this very day, you're going to have Israelites, they just, they're not going to understand, they're not going to give a damn. You might be truly sincere trying to wake them up because you want to see them delivered, and they just truly just don't give a damn. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Now let's hit Ephesians 1 and 1. Sorry I had to jump back to that. No. Because we, we totally missed them. That was my fault. No, that was my fault because I didn't call it. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3. And I want to uh, this is the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and father of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ and that's within these scriptures man that's going into these secrets okay and it also goes with asking okay if you want to grow in this truth Sometimes you got to just take the time and say, you know what, I got to ask for it. Sometimes it's more than just studying and watching videos. There's times you got to actually pray that the Most High increase you, man. Okay, go ahead. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So speaking on what I said before, this is all about what you've been created before everything was created. You're going to be who you are. So if you're blessed to receive this truth, although we still don't know if we're gonna hold on to it, we hope to, but if you're blessed and you have this truth, you better be honored, man. That's because right. this was set up before everything you're looking at was created. Man. That's how serious this is. See, in the world, if you didn't know why people rejected the truth, you'll lose your mind. When you understand the most high is blocking people, if you rebel and try to fight against that, that's just you being a nigga. But when you're spiritual, you understand, okay? I'm not even gonna let this dude offend me. As much as he pissing me off, and I'd like to just for real like get carnal with him, the most high blocking that nigga, whatever, man. To hell with him. You know what I'm saying? We can't be trying to force people to believe this knowledge when you're set up from the foundation of the world to be who you are, go ahead. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's skip ahead a couple chapters to Ephesians 4 and 4. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your call. So like I said, man, as a body collectively, you know, brothers have different lots in this truth. Not all brothers are as uh, eloquent or can read as good or can speak as well, or have the same courage or confidence or the same level of faith as other men. But collectively, we're one body, man. That's right. Okay? I don't know if I've said this before, but when you look at, uh, let these people go by. right there. When you look at a lion, 
I was watching something on uh, TV. It was a lion. He was pretty much faced with 20 hyenas. And they was pretty much having fun with the lion, you know, biting at him, swiping at him. Instead of killing him right away, they pretty much trying to wear him out. So one lion faced with 20 hyenas, he didn't stand a chance. But when another lion came against 20 hyenas, all them hyenas got scared, man, and they took off running. That's so right. all I'm saying is, you know, the scriptures tell you how two is better than one. As a body, as a unit, we can't be we can't be stopped, man. Because see, what I don't know, this brother may know, and what this brother don't know, I may know. That's right. And all these other brothers throughout the earth who are serving you, I was shot. You know, you have a whole body of men with knowledge and different upbringings. You know what I'm saying? And then when you add this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, we are a well-oiled machine, man, okay? So seeing that we're one body, it's highly important to understand we're not like the rest of this world. And when you look at a lion and a hyena, did you know male and female hyenas have penises? And you know, a hyena is a lion's pretty much rival when it comes to all the animals. A hyena and a lion just really don't get along, man. That's Jacob and Esau. And just like Esau, they like to cross-dress. They like to have their women ruling over them. They women like to act masculine. And then present that to the rest of the world. Well, when you look at a hyena, a female hyena, she also has a rod, man. And when you look at that in today's world, you have women thinking they have rods and shit. You know, all this confusion. Wake them up. But see, we know these things because we've been separated from the world and we're not offended to know that these people, they gotta be took out their misery. Uh, let's jump to 16. Verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working, the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. See, we edify ourselves, man. See, a lot of the world, they ain't really listening to what we have to say. We watch each other's videos, man. That's right. Okay, and then here and there, you might even watch a video from another camp. They might not go off as much as others, although they might go off here and there. That's right. But when you're in a spirit and you have that spirit of discernment, you can learn from all things, man, and not get caught up in the madness that might come with it. Okay? So as a body collectively, man, we have the whole truth have all the mysteries and that's how we understand the ending of america is soon man we understand why things are happening the way they are why jay go through what they go through okay why the nuclear missile was created why the new world order was presented and why they're trying to uh, pretty much push that man. we understand these things keep going let's take it all the way to 16. we are 16 you mean 17. i mean 17 yeah right. this i say Therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles, walk in the vanity of their mind. Let's jump back to 10, bro. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And see, we have different lots, man. Okay? Some brothers might come out here like this brother, he's reading. That's right. Some brothers, they break the scriptures down. Some brothers might be holding signs. Some brothers may just, you know, they help make a sign. And they might come out here and, and bring the brothers water or whatever they may need, man. Different brothers have different offices in this truth. You can't look down on another brother because, oh, this, this brother, man, he ain't that good with, with breaking down the scripture. Or this brother here, he ain't that well spoken of when it comes to how he uses his words. Man, the most high dealing with different brothers, man. We have different upbringings and everything, man. You got brothers who had both parents. You have brothers who came up in foster homes. You have brothers who came up raised by their mothers. You have brothers who came up in the street life. Some brothers who came up out of the world and, and, and you know know about the the lifestyle of the doctors and the lawyers and you know we have different upbringings man and the most high collectively brings us together and then as we're bringing this truth out 
you can't tell us anything because we know we have it, man. Through faith, through confidence, That's right. and encouragement of the other brothers who are involved in the same thing we're in, man. That, that boosts your spirit up. Keep going. For the perfecting of the saints. Woo! So this is all for the perfection of the saints, man. All these brothers waking up, that's the perfection of the 144,000. And all the 144,000 ain't prophets, man. So that's if you're right. looking for 144,000 different camps before you think the end's gonna come, you're out of your mind, man. Wake them up. Go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Amashiach, Yahweh Shah. That's what it's all about, man. We ain't out here to waste no time, man. We out here to edify, to gather, to tell our people the truth, man, so they can understand and have, you know, the opportunity to get right or get left, okay? Let's touch on 2nd Ezra 8 and 61. We'll bring out, let's see what time it is. Nah, we good. we we'll bring out about four more. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 8 and 61. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, verse 61. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not shewed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. See? The most high ain't giving everybody this truth. That's right. So don't get all messed up. I don't know if I can do this, man. I'm tired of people, you know what I'm saying, looking at me like I'm crazy. I don't know if I can keep taking this, man. I think I'm wasting my time. Man, the most high ain't giving this truth to everybody, even if you force feed them. You can sit a nigga down, tie him up, and tell a nigga, look, man, I'm about to force you to get this truth. Ah, pull out the scriptures. <laughs> We're going to force you to get this, nigga. And when you release him, he still ain't going to believe it, man, because he ain't meant to get it. That's Only right. a few, and men, you know, men like yourself and a few others, you know what I'm saying, they're going to get it, man. Period. Go ahead. These things I have not shown unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee, then answer, and I said, I and said, Behold, O Lord, now that has, has shewed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last time. And we're in the last times right now. And all the things he said he was going to do, you're seeing it happen right now. Let's stay in uh, Ezra. Uh, let's hit 2 Ezra 12 and 35. So, brothers, man, this is beautiful. <laughs> Sisters out there who believe as well, you know what I'm saying, consider it a beautiful thing. Because not many are gifted the ability to have the mentality, the mental capacity to understand this knowledge. Go ahead. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 12, verse 35. This is the dream that thou sawest, and these are the interpretations. Keep on. Thou only has been met, Slaki. Thou only has been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them. So here it is, you know, a lot of people have this book. But when you look at the Apocrypha, the word Apocrypha really just means hidden. It was a hidden book. So the reason why the Apocrypha was separated from the scriptures, the Most High allowed that to happen until the time came where we are now where it's been presented unto you as being a part of the Bible. Because the Most High wanted to hide certain mysteries. That's right. There's certain things he didn't want you to know at certain times, man. It wasn't time yet. But now we're in a time at the end. Man, we're knowing so much. Brothers are constantly coming out with different discoveries on what Esau did to our people. Coming out with different discoveries on where our people reside. Different uh, cultures. You know, coming out, a lot of them go back to Israel. You know, there's so much things coming out in these last days that just show you, man, this is a beautiful time and we're a part of it. And your name is going to go down, you know, as legendary if you hold on to it. Go ahead. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend. Now, does that mean everybody? It just said, or it pretty much just said, pretty much, tell this to people who have potential, man. Don't just give it to somebody you know when you tell them it's going to stop them. When you present this word to somebody, man, use discernment who you tell it to, man. If you see somebody just, they just an absolute no good piece of shit person.
person, why are you gonna go out of your way and be like, hey, I you know you're a child of God, right? And he a serial adulterer. He don't care about nothing but himself. He's stubborn with everything in his life, man. And if you think thinking you telling him the truth, he's supposed to wake up, man. Most high gonna destroy you, eat him like Yet seven days more that it may be shewed thee whatsoever it pleases the highest to declare unto thee. And with that he sent his locks lock. He went his way. This is uh 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 12. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom, but the grace of God, which was given to the elect. We have had our conversation in the world and more, abu and more abundantly to you ward. Okay, so when you look into this, uh, this scripture here, it says, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity. So we teach with simplicity. Here it is, we've been gifted with the knowledge, the deep mysteries of the Most High. That's right. And we don't try to present it to you all fancy to make us look more than what we are. We're just men who the Lord is dealing with. We didn't come up with this knowledge, okay? We teach with simplicity, so when you hear us, you don't gotta open up a dictionary every 30 seconds. Dang, what, what's that mean? Hold on, pause the video. Let me look this word up. Dang, hold on, pause the video again. What do you say? You know, we don't have to, you know, come off using complexity, being complex, man. We come to you straightforward. And if we do bring out a word that might seem a little complex, we'll break it down for you. Okay, we're not out here to try to win you over based off of how well we speak, man. Okay, go ahead. Read that again. And teach them to the wise of the people. And how do we teach them? Using simplicity. Okay, we don't teach them trying to be all scholarly and, and, and sound more than what we are, man. Either you accept the scriptures or you don't. Go ahead. Whose hearts may, whose hearts thou know, whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. But wait, thou hear thyself yet seven days more, that it may be shewed by thee, whatsoever it pleaseth the highest to declare unto thee, and with that he went his way. Second Peter's to touch on uh, twenty. Twenty one. Twenty. One and twenty. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So when we're teaching you this. Don't give us that BS like, oh, well, that's your interpretation on it. That's right. And, you know, this brother's mother, all due respect, I'm sure that's how she perceives us. We're just men who just have these private interpretations like the rest of this world. My mother thinks the same way. 
You know, I've got family members who think the same way all through and through. I don't think really anybody in my family really considers this truth that I've uh, come across yet. That's right. Okay? But there is no private interpretation. Wake them up! Me and this brother, we don't, you know, come together and have a secret council. How are we going to find a way to deceive the people again using the Bible? Here it is, we're young. Instead of going out to the strip club, to a club, trying to travel the world and do certain things, let's take time out of our life and a lot of people and break down the scriptures totally wrong and do how we want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Why in the hell would anybody do that? Here it is. We come out here. You have different men. They come out here and do this. And of course, okay, you do have those, they'll, they'll deceive you. Whether they're deceiving you intentionally or unwillingly, okay? But why would we take the time to break down our private interpretation on scriptures? And not only that, to see that you can call out the scriptures, which means you have to be taking time out of your life to do some kind of study. That's right. But what you're saying, you're making it up. But they can't bring out one scripture. Except for like maybe uh, John 3 and 16, John 8 and 32, you know, the truth will set you free. Might be able to bring out some scriptures in the, in the Psalms or the Proverbs that just stay open in their house. But our people don't bring out scriptures. Wake them up. But they'll tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. That's right. You don't study, but you're telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about with what I study. If you're involved in chemistry or you're involved in some type of study that I'm not into but then when you tell me something I, I, I don't believe I don't I, that's not right nah no 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 that's no 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 wake them up that don't make sense but you study though who in the hell am I I'm nothing I'm nobody I don't matter I'm just giving opinion so our interpretation is not what we're giving we're giving you through the Holy Spirit the truth, man. The things that we're bringing out is given to us because it's secretive, and then we manifest it to the rest of the elect while the world is blinded to it. Okay? And it's sad, but it's true. So when you look at George Floyd, many other Israelites are going to fall in that same fate, man. And they're not going to wake up to this truth. And I guarantee George Floyd heard this truth. I guarantee it. Somewhere, some way, he heard this truth, man. I guarantee it, man. Uh, let's go to one more. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 11. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So wherever the men of the Lord are, they're bringing out the words of the Most High. And you better believe the words of the Lord that they're speaking, if they're speaking the words of the Lord, those things are going to happen. It has no, you know, purpose to look at somebody and say, well, nobody's listening to you. So why would you do that? I mean, do you think we crackheads, man? Do you think we just up here seeing nobody's listening? But yeah, we're willing to do this. Like, do you really think we so bugged out, we, we high off meth, crack, to not understand nobody's listening? So what would keep us doing this? Why would we take the time out of our life to do some crazy stuff like this, right? I'm sorry, I knew it was gonna close out there, man. Spirit kind of changed. Let's get a first Corinthians 1. I'm going to grab one more. We'll, we'll wrap it up here, man. This is uh, second, uh, Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, being the Israelites, the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So we're, not, right. we're not speaking our own words. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So everything within these scriptures that we're bringing out is true, man. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, which incredulity just means unbelief, all right? Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all, and it's 
scriptures mean what it say? For all the unfaithful shall die and they're unfaithful. That's right. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. That's right. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. All right? Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 21. For after that in wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Man, don't you think, you know, we understand people ain't listening to us and how foolish we look? But don't you understand, because your mom, I should have brought that out when your mother came out here. Because she, she was more concerned on how people would look at us or how they would think about us or whatever. Like their opinion matters. You the scriptures. Go ahead. You can ask it. You can say we can the enemies in the state. Yeah. Really yeah, exactly, man. You, you can't care about how people are going to look at you, man. Because, see, people are going to feel how they feel about you no matter, you know, how you go out of your way to please them. That's right. In this world, they go out of their way to please people all the time that are still going to talk shit on them behind their back. All the time, man. So, we're coming out here bringing out these mysteries to our people and even if it seems no one's listening it's said through the foolishness of preaching because this is foolishness nobody listening to us man and if you think about it carnal mindedly this is dumb right this is silly why waste your time because it pleases the most high that's right that's why and that's what he asked of us man this isn't a question on will you go out there nigga get your ass out there and wake up our people or I'm gonna fucking destroy you if I set you up to be a prophet. Okay? Exactly. We ain't got no choice, man. Just because it might seem like we have the uh, impression of free will, we ain't out here based off free will, man. The fear that's within us, we understand. Like, hey, man, I gotta do this. I am not trying to get caught up in that judgment that I've been reading about and talking about. I bring it out all the time. Why in the hell would I wanna be a part of that? All right? So. We're going we gonna to go ahead and close it out right there, man. Lord willing, that was simple, edifying, straight to the point. Kahala Yahweh, Ba Shum Yahweh Shai, Shalom.